Hello, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Thank you so much for being here and to our amazing creators, Saza and Carson, for joining us and the absolutely incredible Lisa doing all the amazing work at Save the Children. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day and joining me to chat a little bit. So we have a special event going on with Save the Children, Create for Kids this month. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. We're going to learn a little bit more about Seza and Carson, their fundraising efforts, their community, their streaming, all that good stuff. So we're going to have so much fun today. We're going to start off with a round of introductions. Y'all know who I am. I'm Ashley. I am the community manager for Tiltify. I do all the fun stuff, community creating or connecting with creators and charities and all that fun stuff. I love it. I love it. We're going to throw the round of introduction to Elisa. Let's learn a little bit about you and your role at Save the Children. Yeah. Hi, um, I'm Lisa. I'm at Save the Children US um, and I am my official title is Associate Director of Peer to Peer Fundraising. So that encompasses um, things like Facebook fundraisers and um, sites like GoFundMe and all kinds of third party um, fundraising. But the bulk of what I do is oversee our program where we're doing fundraising with digital influencers. So mostly on Twitch, but also YouTubers. Thank you so much, Lisa. And we're going to throw the round of introductions to Seza. Let's learn a little bit about you, your community, and your content creation journey. We want to hear all about that. OK. Uh, hello, my name is Seza, or Sarah. Um, I'm from Australia, but I live in Scotland. And I started streaming on Twitch about four years ago, um, streaming mostly my artwork and all of its processes and creation process. Um, I mostly do watercolor artwork. Uh, and sometimes digital. I've been doing digital for a little while. And yeah, uh, I started um, <laughs> dropping the bolt because I don't know what to say anymore. <laughs> You're okay. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm so yeah. jealous. I envy both of you and person. <laughs> I can't draw. I can't paint. I can't do any of that. So I've been watching all your artwork and I'm like, oh my God, they're so talented. I'm I love it. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Y'all are doing great, talented work, beautiful Thank work. You. Good job. <laughs> I can yeah, never do you. that. That's that's why I pay people to do it. So <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. Carson, let's learn a little bit about you and your content creation journey. Yeah, sure. Hi. Uh, so I'm Carson, Carson Drew it on Twitch. I've been on Twitch for, I think now uh, we're coming up. So September 1st will be seven years streaming, six years partnered on Twitch, uh, doing art almost exclusively traditionally, uh, watercolor and ink, um, very similarly to, uh, to Seza. Um, and uh, yeah, just, I've been, I've been doing that, trying to raise money for wonderful charities like Save the Children. Um, been doing it a few years now and it's it's been so rewarding and wonderful every year to be able to make cool art that you know people all around the world get to color and it's for a good cause too which is just really really wonderful so um, yeah it's 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 been wonderful like I, i'm so happy that uh so proud and so you know happy that i get to be a part of this team and do really cool stuff so yeah mm. oh that's so sweet <laughs> and is this your first year participating in Create for Kids, or have you done it before? Uh, me personally? Uh, both. Uh, oh, both oh, of us. Says, says, do you want to go oh, first? Uh, I mean, I participated first in 2018, and then 2019 um, had to skip last year, and then this year come back with it again. So, yeah. Awesome. Uh, Carson? For, for me, um, yeah, I've been trying to do it consistently every year. I think I'm. When did I start? I think that was 2018 was when when I did the first one. But um, yeah, it's been it's been a really really cool thing to do, and it's it's a lot of fun. <laughs> it's mm. it's been a lot of fun just um, making stuff. I think the first year I did one, second year I did like two drawings, and I kept getting like more and more ambitious with it. But I think last year was just two again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, and since we're on a topic of special events that Save the Children does, is there any other events that Save the Children does throughout the year, Lisa? Yeah, we run a couple. Um, so right now it's Create for Kids, and that's really a celebration of the entire creative community on Twitch. Um, uh, just creators from all over um, Twitch doing 
drawing and music and cooking. This is our cooking week. Um, last week, we were featuring um, creators who do makeup and drag and cosplay and different kinds of um, activities like that. Um, so other events that we do, um, the, the other main event that we do, it's a little bit more focused on gaming. So that's called Gaming Tuesday, and it happens uh, the two weeks around Giving Tuesday every year. So for anyone who doesn't know, Giving Tuesday is the International Day of Giving Back. Um, it happens the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. So there's in the United States, at least there's Black Friday, which is the big shopping day, um, Small Business Saturday, and then I forget what some of the other ones are, but Giving Tuesday is the Tuesday. So Giving Tuesday we've run every year, or Gaming Tuesday we've run um, for the last couple of years, uh, the two weeks around it. Um, this year we also did an event in June um, that is called Survive to Five. And so that was focused on our newborn, newborn early childhood survival programs. And that was in June around one of the International Children's Days. And that was the first time for that particular event, correct? Yes. That yeah, went, that was amazing. Yeah, that went really well. I just want to give you a clap. That was great. Well, <laughs> I, and, love I mean, okay. clap back at to Tilt Tiltify because that was actually, um, we worked very closely with Tiltify and the idea for the event came from Tiltify yeah. and sort of, you know, a lot of how we structured it. Um, so that was, I mean, that was really helpful. It was a little bit different than some of the events we invited. Um, a smaller group of streamers, we just had, we sent out fundraising boxes. The goal initially was to raise $25,000 for kids, um, which is enough about to save the lives of about 50,000 kids in our program. Um, and we ended up raising over $80,000. So it was just wow. absolutely, you know, such a phenomenal event. We were so grateful for the folks who joined. Yeah, that was, I loved every second of that event. That was great. So I hope that continues to happen every year. I'm pretty sure it will. So I can join in on that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you for sharing all that info with us, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you. And I wanted to go more into what is Save the Children and what is the main initiative of Save the Children? Yeah, so Save the Children, we're an international nonprofit. Um, we work, I'm based out of our U.S. office, um, but we work in about 120 countries around the world. Um, we're over 100 years old. Um, and we our, our mission is to basically address all of the issues that children face if they're growing up in poverty. So almost anywhere in the world, um, we've got three main pillars. Uh, we're looking to help kids survive um, the survive early childhood. That's a you know a time that they're born healthy, um, that they're surviving early ch childhood diseases, that they're able to access education and access a good education, um, and that they're protected from harm. So protection from harm can be sort of, you know, every day um, in their life, kind of you know, protection against early child marriage or child trafficking. And then also during times of emergency, which unfortunately we've seen quite a bit of um, this past week with the, the earthquake in Haiti. Um, we've been dealing with the coronavirus outbreak for, you know, over a year now. We do disease response, um, uh, natural disasters. We work in conflict areas. Um, so really, you know, comprehensive. We're just, we're fighting for kids. We're fighting to... Um, make sure kids are, are able to survive childhood and become productive adults um, and really fighting for the rights of children. I love Save the Children. It just touches my heart a little bit. I, I love everything that you all do. And especially you, Lisa, you're working very hard working with creators and the stream team and everything. So thank you for all you do. And I always want to tear up because Save the Children has such a powerful initiative. And I love that. And I am tearing up. <laughs> oh my gosh, no. <laughs> uh, everyone knows I'm emotional. Oh my goodness, the Libra in me. But thank you for sharing that, Lisa. Not going to cry today. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, I love that Save the Children helps with natural disasters and they're helping with Haiti, earthquake relief. And you, Save the Children is so proactive on helping with any events that happen throughout the world. And I love that about Save the Children. And if you all want to fundraise for Save the Children through Tiltify, you could do exclamation fundraise. And if you want to learn more about Save the Children, you could do exclamation Save the Children in chat as a command. And I wanted to go a little bit more with Saza and Carson with why you chose to fundraise for Save the Children. And we can start with Saza. Okay. So... I, I had a little think about it, um, obviously, um, when I first heard about it in about 2018. Um, and I was like, oh, I can make a coloring page. And I was like, I love Save the Children. I've always known what's that, that Save the Children are a thing. And, um, you know, helping give kids the support and the education 
that they need to be able to grow into who they want to be, um, uh, let alone, you know, medicine, medicine care and stuff. But I know, like, me and myself, you know, I have I have very privileged growing up. I was supported by my family. I had the education and the services and everything that I needed to grow into becoming who I am today and being able to uh, access everything to become a, a creative individual and, and pursue my art and my interest in, and a career in it uh, of sorts. So, you know, the thought of being able to help other people um, and kids to to be able to have access to this is just wonderful. Um, it's really, really, really lovely to be able to hold a creative, uh, a, a charity stream uh, each year to at least help for something to sort of give back in in sense to a society as well of all of the generosity and everything I've ever been shown and to give it back to to others is, and people in need is just, you know, wonderful. So, yeah. Well, I love that. Thank you so much, Sasha. And we'll throw it to you, Carson. Yeah, I mean, I... <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I don't know if I can say it as as eloquently as and as succinctly as that, but um, I mean that's 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 very much my sentiment too. I think um, my first exposure to it uh, to save the children was uh, thanks to my good friend Moral, who um, approached me and she said, "Hey, I'm working with this wonderful company and uh, this wonderful organization and." We're, we're trying to do a really good thing, and I think you'd be a perfect fit for helping us with it. And um, doing my own research and, and learning about all the incredible things that Save the Children was uh, has been doing and continues to do. And it was so inspiring and so just such such a wonderful thing to, to take part in. And I think... Um, it, it really resonated with me. I mean, as a as a kid, so one of the one of the charities that I uh, always try to um, support as well is a local charity here um, called uh, Sick Kids Children's Hospital, and they do a lot of great work. But they helped me personally as well as someone who has scoliosis, so my spine kind of does like a little S curve thing. And um, without them, I wouldn't have gotten a back brace through high school that helped me you know, not be just like completely hunched over and, uh, and um, unable to do most of the things that, uh, that I love to do today. So it, um, it really was something that um, organizations like that, that are helping children and focused on enriching the lives of children and helping them through, uh, through all of the, I don't know if you're getting cat purring, by the way, <laughs> but, um, but uh, just, you know, going through all of that stuff and doing incredible things for um for people all around the world i think it's just such a wonderful thing and uh children really are our future you know um they're, mm. they're like they they are they hold the key to everything you know like where we will be how how we will get there and and i think um supporting that is so important and um coming from a, a family that similarly to Seza, you know, I really did have a lot, all of the opportunities that I wanted to have, you know, I got like being a kid and being really interested in drawing and drawing on everything and all over the house. They're like, okay, let's get this kid some, to a tutor or something so yeah. he doesn't draw on our walls. And, <laughs> um, and so from a young age, all the way up until, you know, uh, I graduated from university, I had the support of my family um, in terms of pursuing a career or at least um, pursuing the education that would get me somewhere <laughs> with art. Mm. And, um, and I'm really thankful for that, you know, uh, for having those opportunities. And I know that there are a lot of people around the world that, who don't get those, those opportunities. And to be able to be in a position where I can give back and, um, and enrich other people's lives in ways where they can do that, um, I think is just so important. Oh, what happened to my video? Did my, did my <laughs> I'm wondering. Am I like a, you are a um, pixelated. I'm a big blob. Mess. What happened there? Okay. <laughs> hmm. Let me refresh here. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. Stand by, chat. Stand by. There you are. <laughs> You're I, just okay. so artistic and creative, Carson. Wow. Yeah. This just yeah. shows camera on your camera. Can, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Camera can't handle it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, there we go. I only just looked over. Was that was I like that the whole time? No, it just happened. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. But yeah, I, hopefully that 
<laughs> yeah, sorry. That just, it just paused you there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so lovely to hear about your story. And yeah, scoliosis is not fun. So I'm happy you got that back brace. Um, I don't have it, but family member has it and they are just not comfortable at all. So I'm glad you got that back brace. I hope you're doing better now. Um, and that's just great that you all came from a background of privilege and you want to use your platform to do better and support those kids that mm. don't have privilege. I really admire that about both of you. So thank you for using Tiltify to support your fundraising efforts and giving back to these kids because they really need us. And Save the Children is so wonderful. I will keep saying that over and over and over. <laughs> And, you know, since we are on the topic of fundraising, um, what inspires you most to fundraise with your community specifically? And we can start with Seza. Um, I just heard myself. Whoops. Um, I guess, yeah. Um, it's, again, uh, what I sort of touched on before, with how much the support they show me um, as an individual, and especially being a creative streamer, um, I think a lot of people come in and they, they, they're really keen to support you, which is fantastic because they see what you're doing and, and, you know, as an artist, you know, you're often starving and everything. So need a little bit of money. Um, so to be able to, yeah, give back and, and uh, support a charity, I don't know. I just feel a little bit like it's, it's sort of giving back in a sense instead of um, it being all about me. I don't know. Yeah. I like it. I like it. <laughs> no, I like it. Like, I, it doesn't always have to be about me. Let's just support an organization that I want to support. And yeah. I, love it. I love it. I love it. And can we go more into detail about that with you, Carson, as well? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, for me, the streaming thing has always been my, my, uh, my outlet for fun and for my that creative freedom because my day job is making emotes and doing creative things for other uh, for other streamers and a lot of that stuff even though it's really fun and engaging it's still work for someone else and um, the stream has always been something where it's been my outlet to show my creativity and just make up stuff that I want to make you know um, mm -hmm. the the most the most fun I have is is just grabbing my brush you know, and just coming up with something as I go. And uh, and it's been really rewarding to have a community that supports that. And so through that, I really wanted to to, um, to use, use the stream as well as something where, and that community as something where we can funnel our energy into, you know, rather than like, hey, you know, yeah, you can support me, but you know what would be really cool is if you support this organization or that organization or this cause or that cause and mm. um you know do good and hopefully inspire others to do good you know around the uh around the world and um having such a international community you know uh, uh wonderful people who are coming in from europe and from you know from australia from china from from canada and and the states of course uh, there's there's so many wonderful people from all different walks of life and having those conversations with them, even just engaging in conversations with people about uh, the stuff that's going on around the world and the ways that people can help and um, why that stuff is important is, uh, is, is great. So I'm really, really honored that I have that platform to be able to put that voice forward or those points or, you know, there's those talking points I think it's important to talk about. So I try to use my stream as well as an outlet to... Uh, to inform or to at least encourage conversation. Oh my gosh. And you've been streaming for so long and that's awesome that you just have that initiative around your stream and you're doing an amazing job with that. Thank you so much, Carson, for sharing that with us. So inspiring. Both of you are inspiring. I love this. And I'm sure you're <laughs> inspiring other people in a chat. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And hey, Lisa. Hi, hi. I wanted to ask you a little bit about how people can get involved with Save the Children outside of fundraising. Yeah, so there's a couple ways. Um, and I also, I mean, I just want to say also with, with fundraising and with, you know, both Carson and Seza, like it's, 
it's amazing from the point of view of someone who doesn't stream. And I don't have that kind of like, I haven't been building the community or, or, you know, that kind of online community. I think like, it's one of my favorite things to do is to watch charity streams and watch how, you know, communities come together for like this goal and to, you know, sometimes it's to like torture their favorite creator, but a lot of times it's to really like uplift and, you know, just celebrate. Um, and that's just always such an amazing, inspiring thing to watch. One of the things that I love best about, you know, live streaming and, and Twitch in general, it's just like, it's just so fun and it's just so wholesome and, and wonderful. Um, so outside of fundraising or outside of donating to Save the Children to Support, there's a bunch of ways that people can can get involved. Um, I will say right now, it's a little challenging. You can't do like in-person volunteering. Um, in general, actually, we don't do that much in-person volunteering because of child protection reasons. Um, that's the primary thing. Anyone going to our programs is you know background checked. Um, we take that very seriously. A lot of our programs run within schools, so you've got to go through the school district um, for emergency response programs. Uh, there's significant amount of training, and I've been I've been trained to deploy, which I haven't been able to do because I have small kids. But to deploy to a place like Haiti after an earthquake, where our staff are literally camping in tents, um, you know, those hotels haven't been cleared, and you've got to have a certain amount of training to be able to do those kinds of in-person activities. Um, when I said before, Save the Children, one of the things we fight for is children's rights. So we work here in the United States. I know we're probably getting viewers from all over the place. So it's going to depend a little bit country by country what you can do in your country. And there's different Save the Children organizations or different members. We're all one Save the Children. We're all going towards the same goal. The fundraising, it all goes to the same places. But in terms of actions you can take, we do have advocacy um, opportunities and advocacy ac actions. So I know in the U.S., if you go to savethechildren.org, that's our main website, and there's a how to help. And within that drop down, it's like along the top of the page. Within the drop down, there's an advocate, and so you can see different you know petitions you can sign. You can find out who your representatives are in Congress and in the Senate. We usually have um, specific like funding bills that we're trying to get through Congress. So things like. Um, you know, right now, education, making sure that kids are able to get back to school and get back safely to school to make sure that education programs are funded. That's a big push. So you can add your name to that. You can call your representative. You can talk to them about prioritizing issues for kids. Um, there's there's other kinds of bills. For a long time, we were pushing um, uh, global support for newborn child survival types of programming and return on newborn child survival. So making sure that you know, the issues that we care about, the issues that we know through our research and our programs that will help kids the most, that those are prioritized when the governments are going and saying, okay, I'm going to take like, you know, this trillion dollars here and trillion dollars, you know, government budgets, these big things. But to make sure that, you know, the issues we care about are, are in there. We don't have, children don't have an AARP. They don't have, you know, a big organ, organization that's advocating for their rights and children a lot of times can't advocate on their own. A lot of teenagers can, but like little kids can't really, you know, a baby's not going to go, you know, to Congress. So we're, we're trying to take in some of that. We're trying to empower kids to advocate for themselves, kid, kids helping kids, but looking at, you know, wherever the Save the Children is um, in your country and seeing, you know, signing up to get um, petitions or signing up to, to call your representative, your local representatives, um, absolutely a way that you can really help. Wow. I was just going to ask you about how you can advocate for children too. So thank you for touching on that. And I know we had we had Draskia in chat say that they have been supporting a child for about four years now with donating. How can you do that through your site? So that that is probably through child sponsorship. Um, and child sponsorship is an awesome program. Um, not every Save the Children country has it, or not every Save the Children member has it. Um, the U.S. does, I think, Korea and Italy. So those would be the sites. But if you go to the U.S. site, so from there, you can do, it's a monthly donation to support, um, you know, an individual child or an individual program. Um, and you can write back and forth to the, to the child. So that's a really great way to, to get involved as well. Oh, that's so sweet. I want to do that now. Let's all sign <laughs> up. <laughs> Thank you, thank yeah, that you. Sounds wonderful. All that. And so, Lisa, I really appreciate it. And you know, it just it really stresses like how funds really directly support these kids and their rights. So, again, if you want to fundraise or donate to save the children, you can do Escalation fundraise. You can donate directly through the Tiltify site. Um, <clears throat> sorry about that. Um, and I wanted to go a little bit more of how funds directly support save the children. If you can give us a breakdown in different categories. Lisa. Yes. So um, 
Yes. So our programs can get kind of complicated on like a big level. They can get kind of complicated. Um, one of the things I actually love best about Save the Children is sort of like the more you learn about the programs, like the more interesting they are. And like our, our pro, I'm just, you know, I'm, I work on our fundraising department. I work in, you know, our digital team. Like I'm not on the ground with the programs. Anytime you, we talk to the program folks, anytime you, you're on the ground, you know, talking to somebody on the ground, like it's, they're just in, absolutely incredible people um, globally, worldwide. These are, you know, people working within their countries that want to make their countries better. I think um, it, it can be hard to pick out like certain sort of like equivalencies, but there's, one of the amazing things is that you know even just a small donation can go really far distance in a lot of the countries where we work so things like um it can take just like a dollar to to feed a child for a day or to provide essential early childhood vaccines um things like you know when when you're looking at a situation like in haiti where people don't have houses you know about five dollars can provide shelter for somebody um temporary shelter until they can get back into their house and that provides them you know, we'll, we'll, we'll do things like we'll pre-position supplies. So we have, you know, regional offices. So when an emergency happens, you know, within a day, we're able to say, okay, we know we're going to need these supplies. We're going to get them on the ground, you know, before all of the sort of logistics kick in. So for, for a situation like in Haiti, and I keep bringing up Haiti because I've, I've been reading all this stuff the last, you know, couple of days. That's one of the things we're focused on right now. So the earthquake happened on Saturday morning at 7.30 and a hurricane came by or a tropical storm came by like three days later. So you've got all these people that no longer have a house or their houses aren't safe and they're on the streets because you can't be in a building and there's aftershocks and a tropical storm is coming through. So like sort of the immediate distribution of supplies, um, you know, food items, um, clean water kits, especially with Corona around, um, diapers for babies, um, tents, things like that. Um, so it, like the immediate aftermath and emergency, it's really important to have those kind of supplies positioned. And those things can be, like I said, like $5 can provide, you know, a kit for a family or housing for a family for a temporary shelter. Wow. I love hearing, you know, those direct um, fundraising amounts, how they are a gift, you know, those gifts that you give. And I love that so much. $5 temporary shelter. That is that's amazing. I love hearing things like that because those are also incentives you can give to your community. Like, hey, if you donate $5, you're impacting these kids with temporary shelter. So I love that. And I love having a long list of, hey, $5 is this, $10 is that, a dollar does this. So thank you for sharing some of those with us today, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I love seeing the children. Just want to say that. <laughs> For the tenth time today, <laughs> and I want to throw it to our creators. Um, I wanted to ask about your experience using Tiltify and fundraising with your streams, and we can start with Carson. Sure. Yeah, uh, Tiltify has been been great for that. I mean, I've been using it since, well, I guess since I started raising money for Save the Children, but um, actually, maybe even before then. I'm trying to think of when I was using it. And for what? But I I know definitively that 2018 was was a year that I did use uh, did use Tiltify, um, and uh, it's been it's been a wonderful platform for that. Um, all the extra tools that they that you now have on there as well, in terms of um, getting the layouts to work and the integration with uh, with um, alerts and like not even alerts, but like the whole overlay and everything like that, like getting everything put together, I think is, uh, is wonderful. So being able to do all of that in, in one place, you know, whether I'm raising money for save the children or for, um, for another organization, like, uh, it's, it's wonderful to have one place where I can go and I can set it up. I can say, yep, like just easy as pie. Like, this is the one I want to support. This is how I want to do it. I can set up this, that, and the other, and it's all, it's all right there. It's nice. It's great. Awesome. Thank you. I'm glad. I just love hearing that it's easy and it's all in one place. That's what we want to hear. Yeah. <laughs> to make it as easy as possible for our creators to just start a fundraiser and get to doing some good, you know? And we want to hear a little about your experience as well, Saza. Can I just like put up a mirror and then just say like exactly what Carson just said? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's just um, I hadn't heard of Tiltify until I started um run fundraising for save the children and yeah i really i've seen now that like obviously you can you can fundraise for all sorts of different charities through tiltify and i often see quite a lot of the huge streamers on the front pages and stuff um 
it, it's all integrated through Tiltify and I just think it's really easy and and uh, it's a seamless sort of process and it's all integrated again with uh, with OBS and and stream elements so easy for the the alerts and um, I really like the little donation tracker um, bar so I like seeing that go up every time when you're on stream it goes Ooh, like Ooh. but <laughs> yeah no it's it's just very easy and um, I also like the idea of the incentives um, so that when people go to donate and then they can click on, you know, you choose your reward and then they know that they're getting that reward and that's nice and easy and everything's just laid out and makes sense. So um, yeah, it's, it's very good. It's very easy. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Yay. 10 out of 10. <laughs> 10 out of 10. <laughs> Woo. Yes. Gold star. <laughs> Well, I'm happy to. I, mean, I can. Can I chime in as someone who has to look at like I evaluate these kind of websites like this? We have to, you know, decide yeah. which ones that we're on that kind of thing. I think you know some of the things that Tiltify brings is is like the ease of interactivity with the stream, which is one of the most amazing things. So like you know with the alerts and with things like polls or the rewards are really great as well. But even like you know some of that kind of functionality where you're doing like the milestones and that triggers you know creators to do something and the fact that it can just integrate, I think. That's really fun. I think one of the favorite, one of my favorite usages that I've seen is um, John and Hank uh, Green from YouTube. They do an annual project for Awesome Stream, um, and this year they had done it on Tiltify, and they had a poll running on the correct pronunciation of GIF, whether it's GIF or GIF. And that poll raised something like sixty thousand dollars because that's a really serious topic on how you pronounce, you know, if you're gonna the correct pronunciation of GIF. <laughs> GIF or GIF. So I think just like those kind of fun things, it just adds to the community spirit and just makes, um, it puts the fun mm, in fundraising. The fun, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I, I did not know about that fundraiser. I didn't know they had a poll for that. No. <laughs> Keep that in the back of my mind to utilize that now. <laughs> That's such a good poll. Especially <laughs> yeah, good one. Pizza, does it belong or does it not? Um, yeah, I always come up with fun, quirky polls that people get really, really aggressive on. And it's great. I love it because they really get the donations. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much, Lisa. And I I just love Tiltify. Totally not biased, but I just love it. <laughs> we can get creative in our own way with all the features we have, incentives, targets, polls. And, you know, Targets has come a long way. Targets has come a long way because people didn't use it before when it was challenges. Now it's Targets and it's really fun to utilize with your streams. So, and now that we're on a topic of utilizing Tiltify features, I wanted to go a little bit more in detail with how both of you are artists. So how did you create incentives and rewards for your campaigns using your art? And we can start with Saza. So, um... I, I will admit that I kind of have handled the incentives manually um, just because I didn't quite understand. I, I think I put up a, an incentive on Tiltify and then I got confused and took it down. But that's my problem. It's not your problem. <laughs> but I have um, a raffle going. So it's basically every single donation over $5 gets put into a raffle. Uh, and so I'm tracking that through the donations, which are wonderful through Tiltify. And then I put all of the donations into an Excel spreadsheet uh, and I've got it all tracked out on there. Um, and what was the other thing I'm doing? I'm doing, so the top four donators get some hand painted Pokemon cards. Um, it's Ooh. just been a bit of fun that I've been doing. Uh, I really enjoy just sort of creating art for fun because sometimes it can get pretty heavy. I'm sure Carson knows when you've got commissions and, and all this work to do and, and you've got expectations, it's nice to just sort of let loose and do something fun. Um, so I paint the Pokemon cards for the top four donators and that's really created a bit of a donation war, to be honest, which has been fun um, and a real good incentive for people to donate. Uh, and so thank you. I see a lot of you in the chat from my, from my community and I just, you're making me smile. Thank you for being here. But I'm just like, I'm sorry, I, I took your money. Save the children, took your money. I can show you some of the cards though, if you want. Look. Yes. So this is this is one of them that I did recently, and then I did a a, a Charmander as well, because we love Pokemon. It's just yeah. So 
I'll, I'll be doing two me. more. Thank you. They're just a bit of fun. <laughs> and that's for the top yeah. four, the top that's four really donors. Amazing. I'm going to have to yeah. go check that. I need all four. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those are so good. Thank you. You're so talented. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just a bit of fun and I can sit down and paint them. And I guess being able to work on the incentive live on stream as well also helps because then people go, what's that? And you go, how do I get one? And you go, pay money. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. And you'll get it, okay? Yeah. Here. I love Just make that. sure you pay more than that guy and you'll be right. <laughs> and you'll be okay. I yeah. Love it. Thank you so much for showing us a little bit of your art, too. I'm, I'm just so excited. I love seeing artwork because I can't do it. And y'all are just so talented. I, I know I keep saying that, but yeah, good job. Y'all have did such a great job with your art and I'm sure you're learning more and more by the day and <laughs> but that is like top tier art that is great I love it <laughs> thank you Saza and we'll hear a little bit about you Carson how you utilize your artwork with your incentives and everything with fundraising sure yeah I, I used to go uh, honestly I used to go much harder with it and we'd have like a lot of really aggressive things like oh yeah hey if you donate at least this amount I'll make a postcard and I'll send it out to you. And we did all sorts of things like that. And uh, we managed to raise a lot of really, you know, a lot of money for really great causes, uh, thanks to it. But more recently, I think I've I've kind of dialed back. And I, hearing what says says has been doing, I feel like I need to get back into it. I need oh. to get back into it. But I, I I feel like I bit off more than I could chew with some of the the stuff that I was doing. And I ended up. Um, just I had like a mountain of postcards that I had to send up, send out. And first I had to, you know, write all of I, I, I told people I would write like a little note for them and like even just coming up with something unique to say, even though they're going to like entirely different parts of the world, I'm like, I can't write the same thing on all of these. So you know, they might compare <laughs> notes. I don't know. So uh, so I wanted I to make sure, part. right? Yeah, like so I, I wanted to make sure that they were different and unique and if I could specialize to the person who donated. And it ended up taking me like, I think by the time I was shipping them out, it was time to raise money for the event again. So it was, <laughs> I felt I felt really bad about that. And um, so I, I tried to ease off on that stuff, but I feel like there's, there's probably much more creative ways that I can do it. And I feel like I haven't really explored those as much as I could. So says I, I might have to pick your brain. <laughs> oh, no, I, I, <laughs> I think that's the thing. Like, I think being as we are, because we're just very kind and loving people, clearly, um, mm. we just want to give people what we think that they, you know, deserve for being so supportive and, and, and contributing to a, a great charity cause. You go, oh, I want to give you this and I'll give you this. And then you, and then you kind of underestimate them, which, which I have definitely, and then you kind of got to weigh up how how to balance what you're giving and then whether it's realistic. <laughs> it's really hard. It's like, yeah. Um, I mean, I've made the mistake of uh, doing a giveaway with every $150. So, uh, but, you know, it's fine. I've got lots of art to get rid of. So <laughs> it's good. Oh, you disappeared again. Goodbye, Carson. Oh, it, oh no. Laid it again. We're good though. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's like, bye. <laughs> Peace. Peace. Um, one of the things we do for Create for Kids also, and I know both Carson and Cesar have been part of this, and I brought props, so I'm going to share my props. Oh. Is so every every year as part of Create for Kids, we put together these coloring books, which are made up of submissions from across the Twitch community. We've had YouTubers before, so these are on hopefully on everybody, but on most of the fundraisers that are part of Create for Kids. Um, these are rewards. So it's twenty dollars for a digital copy, fifty dollars for a printed copy. But there's just absolutely amazing artwork in here. Like this is actually Carson's from last year, his submission from last year. Very so you good. just get this book of just absolutely phenomenal art. This is Noel M. Brooks, who does amazing animal art. Mm -hmm. um, so from across Twitch, so we we put everybody's um, Twitch names so people can find them, and it's just. This is one of my favorite things. Like my my kids love this. They're you know more adult. This is from 
Danator, who is part of Create for Kids again this year. So we just get all kinds of amazing art um, that's on that people can submit pages for, and then we we put this book together. Hmm. That's my props. I want a book. <laughs> I want a book. We have past years. If people want past years, you can pretty much like DM us. But we've got the all these paths. This is I love this one. This is yeah. Mary Ross. <laughs> it's so cute. <laughs> Sorry for any Nintendo copyright claims. Uh -oh. <laughs> and that's what uh -oh. I kept thinking about because I'm we're also both drawing a page for this year, of course. And and I've gone, oh, should I put some fan art in there? And I'm like, well, probably not. <laughs> but we we both figured out we kind of have a similar subject matter. We're both working on a um on knights on horses. Mine's on a seahorse, and yours mm -hmm. is a horse horse. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I just thought that was funny how that sort of happened um, yeah. naturally. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, for me, horses are such a scary thing to draw. Like, I don't know what it is about their legs. My brain just doesn't know what horse legs are. Same. So, <laughs> so it's always the most daunting thing. But for me, it was it was something where I was thinking, OK, well, maybe I can challenge myself and, you know, make something cool like this. Because I did have this idea in my head of, you know, it would be really cool, like a knight with like a, a palette for a shield and a mm. paintbrush for a uh, for a sword. Because I try and I try and really like relate it back to creativity in some way um, with with Create for Kids and, and everything like that. Right. So uh, trying to do that and trying to fit that into the drawing in, in creative ways uh, is, has been kind of fun. But yeah, the, the horse thing. <laughs> Um, oh boy, I, I feel like I would have had um, an easier time if I'd done a, a seahorse. So maybe the next one I do, we'll put a yeah. seahorse in it. I'll do a horse horse. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, we'll 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 swap. It's all sorted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess that would be really tricky horse legs because they they're uh, I'm not artistic, but yeah. they've got these like knobbly knees you know, as well. Yeah. yeah interesting awful. yeah <laughs> you know what it's like it's like if you ask someone to draw a bicycle and they try to figure out like where's the little try i know there's a triangle in there but where what what angle is it and mm. how does it go and you know where are all the bars fitting on it like everyone does it differently um like if you don't look at reference and you're just like oh what does a bike look like okay and then it's yeah uh, you end same up drawing thing with horse. legs for me yeah 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 and then mm. you draw a horse instead <laughs> i just could I'll just add with the with the coloring in book and then talking about the incentives with Save the Children specifically uh, with uh, Tiltify. Um, I think that's what really made it easy to start my campaign back in 2018 when I when I was first coming into it, I was a bit nervous and I was like, oh, I don't really know what to do or what to offer. But the fact that Save the Children had the coloring books, uh, the digital copy and the physical copy just kind of lifted that weight to go, oh, we can contribute to the book. That can be an incentive for people to donate. And it just takes a, a little bit of pressure off of the people who are fundraising. So I thought that was really, really good. I, the coloring book is the reason why I started. So I was like, I love that. I want to do that. <laughs> yeah, for That's sure. Really that's really cool. I and if I do create for kids, I'm probably just going to do really bad art. So don't expect anything. It's just going to be fun. Um, just fun painting. Maybe I could do a Bob Ross stream. So I can <gasps> yeah. do, um, do it. That'd be cool. Yeah. You know, it'd be great too. Is if you've <laughs> uh, if you've got the books from previous years, um, you know, pick a page, pick your favorite page, and you can color that in on stream too, right? Mm. And show off the books that color. people can get. I can do that much. I can color, yeah. but yeah. I don't know anything else. So if I do a Bob there's Ross, also, you can also cook or do makeup, or there's lots of you can do lots of creative. There's so many creative things. Or do Legos. We've had people building Lego sets on on stream. Or um, I think I did a stream. La I'm not a streamer. I did a stream last year playing Animal Crossing because that's creative. I made a Save the Children <gasps> logo in Animal Crossing with flowers. I was very impressed. Yeah. With uh, do you have a picture of this? Because I want to see that. I don't think I have a picture of it. No. Oh, Lisa, we need a picture. We got to see that. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Um, talking about Animal Crossing, I am, yeah, that I'm not good in that either. Like, <laughs> I just put flowers all over my island. And that's about it. And I did a little terraforming in my entrance. And I'm like, oh, that looks cool. But 
I don't want to do the rest of my island. This is difficult. <laughs> Yeah. I, have, I have like a good vision for what you can do. So once I finish doing like the tasks and paying off the house like that, I like mm -hmm. that I got. But then it's like, just make your island pretty. Yeah. That's challenging. I wanted my island to be five star so bad and it's stuck at three. I'm like, well, I'm just a three star <laughs> island. <laughs> it is what it is. It is what it is. But Animal Crossing saved so many people's lives last year, especially. Oh, yeah. I just, I just want to throw that out there. It, it saved a lot of lives, um, including my mom. So shout out to Animal Crossing coming out at the perfect time. So thank oh, you. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it did. It really did. Yeah. Oh, now I want to go boot up my island now and try to work on it. I'm feeling inspired by all of you. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> and Lisa, I just wanted to go a little bit more into detail with the stream team and how it works and everything. Yeah, so Save the Children has a stream team. Um, it's our the community of content creators. So we do um, fundraising rewards at different lifetime lifetime milestones. So folks who who do we have a huge range of people who fundraise. There are people who in a stream raise fifty dollars, or people in a stream that raise you know like hundred thousand dollars. So it's a big range. So these are lifetimes. So if you're a creator that over you know you do a bunch of streams and reach up to a thousand dollars, you get this delightful sweater. I have lots of props. I brought props. This delightful sweatshirt. <laughs> So that's our first um, milestone reward. And then we send out additional rewards at ten, twenty-five, and hundred thousand dollars, I think are our rewards. So you can join that easily. We do have a Twitch channel. Um, it's not used very often. We just did a virtual trip to our programs in South Sudan yesterday. So you can watch that um, and see a look in our programs, but it's twitch.save the children. And from there, you can find the links to all of the socials. Um, Save the Children overall is on, you know, all social media. So you can follow. Um, it's, you know, Twitter it's at Save the Children. It's at Save the Children across any social media. Um, but we also have a streaming focused Twitter account called The Alive Force. So if you wanted to ask any questions of our staff, um, we have a Discord, which is discord.gg backslash Save the Children. But if you go to our Twitch, all of those are, are linked there. Um, so you can join the Discord, and that's a great place to, you know, ask any questions, find out about upcoming events. We do organize a couple events every year, um, and then you know, talk to other creators, get ideas. Um, the Tiltify Discord is another pl great place to get ideas for, you know, shout out to the Tiltify Discord. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to join our Discord, you can do um, exclamation Discord, I believe. That is a command. I believe it is. I hope I said it as a command. Um, <laughs> but yes, uh, the Be a Life Force uh, Twitter is so, so cool because they were really supportive, you know, during fundraising and, you know, retweeting, responding to us fundraising, you know, throughout the years. Really, really good Twitter. And I love when a charity engages with you know, the creator while they're fundraising and stopping in on their streams and being supportive throughout their fundraising efforts. So I love that a lot about Save the Children as well. So just wanted to throw that out there. And we also have an extension, the Control Plus extension. If you have her over the stream, you can follow Seza Carson and the Save the Children Twitch um, accounts. So make sure you do follow all those accounts and keep up with their content. Okay. And um, and as Lisa said, all the socials are on the Save the Children Twitch account as well. But you can pretty much find them at Save the Children across the board. So thank you, Lisa. Um, and <clears throat> sorry. <laughs> I wanted to touch a little bit more about what features that our creators would like on our platform that we don't have quite yet if there are any features you can come up with because i know saza gave us a 10 out of 10 so we might be good but <laughs> clicking in there that you would like to see on our platform and we can start with carson oh gosh on the spot um <laughs> if you have anything if yeah you don't, i'm trying to i'm trying to think right ahead. now i mean i can you know i can customize an overlay I can put in um, a, a tracker. I can put in my own images that I want in there. Um, you've got the uh, the alerts going as well. There's really, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. I mean, you know, I think it really is kind of a 10 out of 10 thing. I think, yeah, I don't, I don't, I can't even think of anything that I'd, 
that I want that isn't already there. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Another 10 out of 10, till to five. There you go, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just racking them up. Yes. And Cesar, did you have anything you want to touch on with that? Or you think? I think not- I'm much the same. Yeah. Like I, had, I did have a think about it and I was like, I can't, there's nothing that obviously springs to mind. So you're doing good in that, in that retrospect. Um, uh, yeah, it pretty much has everything that you'd need. Um, and I guess if anything was added, it would be at a very fancy high level <laughs> that you probably wouldn't need, but yeah. Perfect. Well, I will take a 10 out of 10 twice. Or <laughs> actually, I will take that. <laughs> 2020. Um, with our creators, um, I wanted to ask you, or all three of you, actually, what would you tell someone that wants to start their first fundraiser for Save the Children? Any advice you would give them? And Lisa, let's start with you. How about that? Um, I think my biggest piece of advice, I think a lot of people are afraid to start fundraisers and they're afraid to fail. Um, So I would say, you know, for we talked a little bit before about the kinds of impact that you can have with kids for really not that much raised. So I think, you know, it's it's amazing when you see fundraisers that raise huge amounts of money, but really even, you know, even like $50, even anything really, really helps. So setting, you know, goals that you can accomplish and, you know, then raising them after, but even doing your first fundraiser, getting used to the tools, seeing how your community responds. Um, and I don't think you need to be worried if you have a smaller community. I think we see tons of small communities that are fundraising and tons of communities that come together to fundraise. And it's just really um, absolutely inspiring um, to see. So there, there's communities, you know, really small communities that can raise way more than like really big communities just because of the people that they've cultivated in the community and picking a, you know, picking a cause that they care about. Um, so that would be my biggest piece of advice is, is don't be afraid to start and, you know, start small because um, even a even a little amount will really make a huge difference. Thank you so much, Lisa. That is amazing advice. And I would say all of that too and back that up. So mm. let's shoot it to Saza. Yeah, I think um, basically the same thing is starting small is the best way to go. Like even with my fundraising campaigns in the past, I think I started with like $300 in the last like 2018 and 2019. So this year, having especially skipped a year, I was like, oh, I don't really know how much to set. I'll just do like a casual 500. Um, And then you soon find that that's just blown out of the water and you can always up it and sort of judge how the community's reacting and responding and how your incentives are responding to. Um, and yeah, you can, you can always do that and be, be realistic with your incentives and, you know, respect your time as well. But sometimes it does take a bit of effort. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't really know what else I would say. Hmm. When you say, um, <laughs> respect your time what do you mean by that oh so like uh you know I know that a lot of creators can go a little bit or overthink it a little bit and um go a little overboard with what they they think they should be doing um and give too much well I think maybe I'm just speaking from personal experience but um I guess yeah just sort of managing how much you can take on and then not giving yourself so much of a backlog that you then go oh no I need two of me to get through this in a reasonable amount of time. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, well, in most cases, I guess, even if you do set a lot of a lot of tasks for yourself, the community are often really, um, really understanding as well and very patient with anything that you have promised them. <laughs> yeah. Hold on, Carson. Let me bring you back here. Your camera. Wow. Theme mean there we go you're here i'm not sure what's going on because in, in like our feed yeah it's so strange. yeah our feed is perfect mm. That's very interesting yeah so, i'm sorry about that we're good no, though okay. we'll just keep okay. refreshing <laughs> sure yeah yeah when you talk about you know um not putting too much on yourself i think that relates to what carson did you know you gotta make yeah. sure you do do what you can don't yeah don't overdo it because it can really stress you out. I've done that plenty of times. I'm like, I have to send out how many thank you cards? I'm like, oh mm. my God. And you do want to have that unique message to each donor. And you're like, I can't just do thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Mm. 
<laughs> so yeah, you, you have to set those boundaries for yourself and make sure things are attainable, you know, realistically. So just keep that in mind. And we can throw that same question to you, Carson. Kind sure, of, yeah. I think you were probably going to say, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I mean, um, the, yeah, I, I think I'm echoing a lot of, of, uh, of what you're both saying. Like, there's, don't bite off more than you can chew, you know, uh, in that sense. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I think uh, giving your community credit, believing in your community, and um, and and really just, you know, any goal, any amount, you know, don't don't disappoint yourself. Don't don't feel bad about what you do manage to accomplish. Like if you if you can uh, sort of just position yourself mentally in a, in a state of hey, if I've raised X amount of dollars you know, every little bit counts, you know, like mm. talking about, um, you know, how, how far $1, how far $5 can go for, uh, for people, how much of an impact that has on their lives. I think it immediately shows, it immediately goes to show that any amount that you manage to, to raise for these communities, for these charities and for these, um, for these causes, it's, it's a great amount, you know, you, you did what you did and you did it positively. And, you know, I think, um, no matter if you're expecting to raise, you know, $5 or if you're expecting to raise, you know, 500 or, you know, a thousand dollars, right. It's, it's, uh, I think, I think as long as you're putting yourself out there and you're, you're, um, you're engaging with your community and you're, you're doing something that you're passionate about, like that's the big thing too, right? Showing your passion for the cause and what you believe in. Um, and that resonates with people in your community as well, right? They will see your engagement in it, your passion for it, how much you believe in, in the, uh, in the cause. And I think, um, it's going to encourage them to, to bring that back around and and do the same. Hmm. That is such a great answer there. Um, it's all about community. Um, they're looking up to you and want to support what you want to support. So it's all about that. And, you know, when you explain why you're supporting an organization too, they definitely will resonate with that and they will jump on board. They're like, oh, what is this new charity? I'm like, oh, this charity does this, and I want to support them because of X, Y, Z. Okay, cool. Let's do the fundraiser. Let's start donating. <laughs> you know, they, they look up to you as a creator and you know the community leader. So it's super, super fulfilling when you build that community and they just support what you support, and I love it. So, thank you for that answer, Carson. That was really good, really good. And I don't think we have any questions from chat. I think we are A-OK. -okay. And I just want to thank all three of you for joining me today, chatting, talking about all the good things that Save the Children does and all about your fundraising efforts and learning a little bit about your communities. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks okay. for having us. Of course. Do you have any infographics that show X amount could fund X, like $1 is asthma treatment for one child, something easy for streamers to visually show impact? Save the Children does have that list. We do. So you can find it on our website. Um, it's savethechildren.org. So I know there's a whole bunch of them just, you know, right on the, the where your money goes page. Um, we we're pretty transparent about that. You can actually look at our income statements and our we file with the federal government and we we put it on there so you can see it there. Um, we also if you get into any of our community spaces or if you go on our Tiltify page, there are links to fundraising guides. So we have put together fundraising guides for streamers that have talking points. It has those kinds of messaging. Um, we have some pictures, logos, um, things like that. So thank you for that question. That's a great, um, that's a great thing to bring up. Yeah, Ben, those are so helpful for fundraising streams. So I'm happy that charities are starting to implement that um, on their site and everything. Having those toolkits are super helpful. So thank you, thank you for that, Lisa. And I hope that helps your, you know, your question, Shark. Thank you. Do we have, oh, we have a question. Okay, here we go. From Ash. Does pineapple belong on pizza? Yes, it does. 
Yeah. I'm on yeah. the yes. <laughs> yes. Are we all team yes? I think so. Are we team yes? No. Says, oh, oh, oh. Says, uh, <laughs> I would say no, but oh, only really? because I don't eat ham and I only associate pineapple with ham, ham and pineapple on pizza. So maybe it's the ham's fault. Maybe it's pineapple's fault. I don't know. <laughs> Pineapple and mushroom is really good if you want a veggie. I love mushrooms. I'll just give you my pineapple and I'll have the mushroom. (laughs) Okay, so as a new charity incentive. Ooh. What'd you think, (laughs) Sadna? What, ban ham? Yeah. Ban pineapples. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, I wanted to know. I know I'm not in the chat. Maybe I should write the question in the chat. How how do you pronounce GIF? Jeff. What each of us? Yeah. You say Jeff? Jeff. Yeah. Really? Really? Wow. Oh, I give. I my wife I I said GIF. GIF, but people bullied me into saying Jeff. So now. Really? Say, yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> like I know the creator said it's Jeff, but also the issue really? that I have with that is that the G stands for graphical. Like right. it's, it stands for. It's a it's a hard G, so to me, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. that's that's my uh... <laughs> Jeff like the peanut butter brand, but no way, right? Exactly. <laughs> I don't like Jeff. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> oh, I love it. Let me make sure we don't have any other questions, friends. Give me one second. You all felt very strong about the pineapple and pizza, so I love that. <laughs> I just, I was yeah. really interested that you were all a hard yes, because most of the time when that question's brought up in my chat, I know that everyone's like, no way. <laughs> that might be a US, is that a US thing? Like, is that how it splits? Maybe. See, I'm it's- Canadian, and in Canada, we have oh, yeah. inexplicable, I don't know why they call it a Hawaiian pizza, but... Hawaiian pizza was was invented, I think, by a Canadian, and um, and it's really? a popular pizza in Canada. But the Hawaiian is the pineapple and ham. So, um, yeah. How wow. do you pronounce JPEG? JPEG. Yeah. <laughs> is that even a question, Chad? Hey, <laughs> Fernandez, please don't tell me because I I can't keep up. <laughs> what is he even? <laughs> Swedish banana pizza? Yay or nay? What is that? Oh, banana. yeah, yeah. Banana pizza. Yeah. Um, Morale can probably tell you about banana pizza. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to come down as a no on that one. It's like banana oh. with curry. I think they put curry powder on it. Wow. I'd try it. I'd try it. I would probably try it doesn't sound very good but (laughs) there's a regional thing where i live um where people there's a mashed potato bacon pizza which sounds like i thought that sounded horrible but when you try it it's like the carbs on carbs it's so good i love (laughs) potato pizza i'm always like have you guys had potato and pizza and they they always go oh carbs on carbs i'm like nah dude like eat it it's good yeah oregano (laughs) some feta Oh, oh, you say oregano, it. don't you? Oregano? You know, oregano. Oregano. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I say oregano. Um, what else do I say correctly, I think? Um, correctly. Correctly. <laughs> oh, <laughs> kind of correctly, kind of. T- wait, it's ter- turmeric? Is it turmeric? Turmeric. Turmeric? I say turmeric. Wow. <laughs> okay, we can go all day talking about yeah. beautiful spices. <laughs> <laughs> all right, y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We really appreciate it and all the love. If you want to keep up with us, make sure you follow the Tiltify channel here. Keep up with us on social media. You can do Ask Me Socials. Follow our TikTok. We just started posting on TikTok, you can duet us, all that fun stuff. And we're also on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all that fun stuff. So yes, keep up with us on TikTok. It is going really well over there. So make sure you hit that follow button. 
and we're gonna go raid another creator now Ooh. let's see who is alive now we'll send some love over to them all right we can actually we're gonna raid aaron aaron was on our last uh interview with pause your game and they do music streams so let's go ahead and oh, tune nice. into some good music all right and we have our raid message really basic but if you can all copy it show some love to this wonderful creator let's get it going all right let's start this raid and we, again we do have our control plus extension to follow seza and carson on their twitch channels and save the children so make sure you hit that follow button for them too and keep up with their content Again, everyone, thank you so much for joining. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. Thank you, thank you, thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. Take care. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>